Let's go, team. Woo! One, two, three. Yeah. Let's do it. Mine's harder than yours. Connor's going to be joining us, Ryan Reed, Roush Fenway Racing, and we'll be competing in the Xfinity Series race at Road America. Look at that thing. Looks good. That's cool. Hang on. I want to take a picture of it myself. I haven't even seen it. My name is Connor Daly. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I am a race car driver. Uh, I've raced everything open wheel so far in my life. Started in go-karts when I was age 10. Progressed through the ranks of, of the open wheel racing series through the road to Indy. And I progressed to my first Indy 500 when I was uh, 21. My name is Derek Daly. I'm Connor Daly's dad. I'm from Ireland originally came here to Indianapolis where I now live as a rookie in 1983 to race at the Indy 500 and never left. From an early age I definitely recognized that my family had a lot of ties to the racing world. Uh, my dad was doing television, uh, my dad was always on the move uh, doing TV for different races all across the country, all across the world. He had retired though when I was born so I didn't actually get to see him race but I knew as I started to get older that he might have actually been doing something in this sport. And it was really cool to be able to just grow up all around the Indianapolis 500 as well. I never missed an Indy 500 since birth. Um, so it was really cool to always be at a racetrack for the majority of my life growing up. I didn't really know that I could also be a racing driver growing up. It was sort of a, an interesting situation where our neighbor actually wanted to go to a go-kart track and recruited my dad as sort of a coach. And I ended up wanting to go along. I thought that sounded like a fun idea to maybe drive a go-kart and I guess the rest was history. From then on, I got into the go-kart. I really enjoyed it and I said, hey, why, why can't we do this maybe again? And sure enough, we did. So he's making the transition to racing cars and he's at the Skip Barber Racing School. I had lost a lot of weight and he had sort of noticed you know, that I was drinking a lot of water. I noticed that he, he's got a ferocious thirst. I mean, it's just, he it, it, it drinks so much water and it just seemed a bit odd. And he's actually in the racing car on the racetrack when Dr. Alvey calls me and says, we think he has diabetes. We were in the hospital. You know, they're doing all these tests on me and all that stuff. And, and my mom was crying, obviously. And uh, it was a weird day because I didn't really know what it meant to be, uh, you know, in this type of a situation. The next thing I remember is he's in the hospital bed. His mom and, and I are there. The doctor walks in and he starts to talk about a disease, a disease called diabetes. And I can see his lips moving but it's hard for me to to take in because the only thing that's gone through my mind is is career <clears throat> that that his career is over <clears throat> so you know we sit there and 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 the doctor says oh everything will be okay but I, I didn't hear the everything will be okay. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, everything he's lived for, maybe it's all gone. All I knew is that I wanted to get out of the hospital and straight back into a, a go-kart or a race car. You think the doctor wants to pacify you, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're, the, you're the hurting family member. But he said, no, he can continue on. Really? Well, what's he going to have to do? Well, he's going to have to, you know, give himself insulin injections. How's he going to manage that? Oh, you can teach him to manage that. We can. And then it all started to fall into place. And so now I'm learning about racing, but I'm also learning about my body at the same time. So I think it was all about, you know, how do we build a, uh, you know, a package for me to move forward in racing, uh, but also, you know, live a, a healthy life as well. He went out and won his very first race car race. He jumps in, he wins it. And so, you know, life began to come back to what we would call normal. Mind you, is a racing driver's life at that age ever normal? What exactly made you want to do this in the first place? 
if you ask a lot of us here in this paddock in IndyCar, I mean, there's a lot of guys who want to get out there, Road America, Mid-Ohio, Watkins Glen, stuff like that, because it is a very entertaining product. There's, they're really good drivers. The series is really competitive, and uh, it just looks like a really good racing environment, like a really good proper race. So road courses are my you know, my cup of tea, and, uh, and that's what I'd love to at least uh, you know, check out first before anything else. The first time someone mentioned uh, the idea of me driving an NASCAR, I was like, absolutely, let's go. Uh, that's something, the final frontier that I have yet to drive. I've driven every type of open wheel racing car. I've driven every type of sports car, really, and uh, you know, now to, uh, to get into the NASCAR realm was awesome. When I fell into television broadcasting, I began to do really interesting track tests. And I was fascinated what a big, heavy taxi cab stock car might be like. So I went to road Atlanta one day, had an opportunity to drive the number six Valvoline Mark Martin car, which was pretty high profile back in those days. I get there and I, I had not met Mark Martin before. He takes me under his wing for the day, takes me out in the car uh, with, with the second seat, shows me what's going on. I'm thinking, man, this thing is fast fast and noisy. I'm envious that Connor can get to jump into something like this because I think it just expands his experience platform and I think he can only be a better driver because of this experience. Doing the Amazing Race was certainly uh, a new experience for both of us, uh, both Alex and I. Uh, pretty wild, um, just everything. I mean, all everything out of your comfort zone, a lot of different stuff for us, a lot of new things, a lot of new places. The Amazing Race came up really out of, out of nowhere. Alexander Rossi had been recruited into this and he needed a teammate. And sure enough, I was living with Alexander Rossi at the time. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I said, sure, why not? I'm, I'm up for anything. The Amazing Race producers had kind of questioned after we'd started sending in our physical information and stuff like that was the fact that, uh, you know, oh, this guy's, uh, you know, living with type one diabetes. That's, uh, that's okay, but you know, are you okay? How are you doing? You know, what's your A1C, et cetera. It was a wild schedule being on that show. It was, uh, everything was different than normal life. Everything was totally out of the ordinary. And they liked talking to Alex and I because I said stupid things all the time. So they, <laughs> our interviews lasted the longest. You know, I needed to make a difference for me because I've been washed out of the IndyCar system. Um, you know, so I'd like to be a part of it. After the Amazing Race had finished and, and the filming had, had uh, come to an end and things had obviously drastically changed, in my career. Well, essentially I had lost everything when I got back from filming that show. And when I got back to, you know, trying to figure out how I'm gonna put the pieces back together again, uh, it's not easy. It was very difficult to be able to uh, come back and start assembling the puzzle pieces again. But sure enough, we do have some things in place now, which is really cool. And to be able to see the success of the work that we did put in over the off season is, is very rewarding. <laughs> Looks like she'll run. Everyone at Lily Diabetes has such a passion for, you know, helping us and trying to figure out ways to, you know, to, to, to just work with us and, and try and, you know, build our programs so we can help each other because it's not often that any race team wants to add cars. It's very difficult to do that. But in this situation, you know, they're, uh, they're doing that for me. So it's, it's really cool to, you know, very thankful for that opportunity. And I can't wait to just, you know, use it as best we can. As a driver living with diabetes to do sort of the open wheel world and the NASCAR world in the same season, is, is really cool. It's really unique to be the first one to do that, to be the first one to be in the Indy 500 and also do NASCAR in the same year. We're doing this now on both sides of the racing spectrum. Uh, I think that's uh, to, an honor to be able to be that guy. I can confidently tell you when you hear the news, don't fret, don't worry, that dream can still be alive. Any child, any person with diabetes it can be managed and life can be as colorful and as lively and as entertaining and as enjoyable as any life that doesn't have diabetes. On the next episode of Road to Road America. Well, this is big right here. Yes, it is. This is do or die on this lap, Connor Daly. I think Connor's absolutely ready for NASCAR. We just took a photo together at the Brickyard, not probably two years ago. We just hashtag Team Diabetes, and everyone seemed to really like that. And suddenly now we are a team. So it's kind of <laughs> cool that team that actually diabetes. happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think Connor patented it, so we're, we're in good shape. That's, yep, that's mine. You're welcome. <laughs>